It is estimated that every day the world uses over 90 million barrels of petrol. Having cheap and reliable gas has become an integral part of modern life. But as the energy transition beckons, refiners are under more and more pressure to ensure blends produce less emissions without compromising on quality. So how does the industry deal with these challenges? And what is the science behind reducing harmful emissions? Let's explore. First, we need to look at the science behind petrol and what basic properties it should have. The first thing to note is that petrol isn't just made up of one particular chemical, rather it's a mixture of sometimes hundreds of different chemical compounds. But these are almost always made up of chains of hydrogen and carbon. Petrol generally consists of molecules with a length of 4 to 12 carbon atoms that are relatively lightweight. These hydrocarbons ignite in the presence of oxygen and an ignition source, releasing energy. In an internal combustion engine, this ignition source is the spark plug, but the high heat and pressure in the chamber can also cause ignition. For a petrol engine to run efficiently, we need the vapours from our mixture to only ignite with our spark plug. The lowest temperature at which this happens is called the flash point. For petrol, this is minus 43 degrees Celsius. Petrol also needs a high auto-ignition temperature, an auto-ignition temperature being the lowest temperature at which combustion occurs without an external source of ignition. But as was just mentioned, premature ignition of the fuel-air mixture due to heat and pressure is still possible. This is known as knocking, and over time will cause serious engine damage. This tendency of a mixture to knock is measured using octane rating. Molecules with more branching, and better still, aromatics, compounds with ring structures, are much less likely to knock due to the higher chemical stability provided by their structure. Longer, straight-chain molecules have weaker chemical bonds holding them together, and so are more likely to knock. Some molecules are very prone to knocking, like heptane, and for others, it's much less likely, such as 224-trimethylpentane. On this scale, a mixture of purely heptane has a rating of zero, and pure octane has a rating of 100. Refineries will optimize the crude oil into fuel with a higher percentage of compounds like trimethylpentane and benzene and reduce the percentage of straight chains like heptane. Generally, petrol sold at a filling station will have an octane rating of around 95. While there is some debate on the exact mechanism by which knocking occurs, one leading theory is that in the combustion chamber, specific chemicals known as hydroxyl molecules can be formed. These react together to form water, with the ensuing reaction being highly exothermic releasing a lot of energy and causing premature ignition. One class of ingredients that were added into blends in the past were anti-knocking agents. Certain organometallic compounds, like tetraethyl lead, prevent this reaction by reducing the number of these free radicals through a series of chemical reactions. When added in small amounts, it was very effective at reducing knocking. However, due to its carcinogenic nature, its use was discontinued in most countries. As a result, refiners were forced to focus on optimizing the mixture itself without additives. But not all crude oil is created equal. Oil that comes from certain regions, particularly the Middle East, tends to have a much higher percentage of molecules in the 4 to 12 carbon atom chain range, and so less time and energy needs to be spent on making them ready for the consumer. But oil from the Athabasca oil sands in Canada is much heavier and thick, with longer molecules forming a bitumen-like heavy substance. Refiners have to use a process called hydrocracking to split these lengthy carbon chains into smaller chunks. In this process, hydrogen, under high heat and pressure, breaks down the carbon-carbon bonds, splitting the chains into smaller segments. Because this is a very expensive process, producers working on these fields will only begin refining when the price per barrel of oil has reached a higher level. Once the mixture has the right chain length, the next challenge is upgrading the octane rating of the mixture. To do this, refiners have a number of tricks up their sleeves, but the two most widely used are catalytic reforming and alkylation. In catalytic reforming, the reaction mixture is placed again under high heating pressure in the presence of a catalyst, producing products with a higher percentage of molecules with ring structures, while alkylation focuses on combining isobutane with an alkene, or a molecule with a carbon-carbon double bond. These processes can increase the octane rating by up to 50 octane numbers. So now that we have a mixture that performs well, the last piece of the puzzle is carbon emissions. By adding oxygenates, or hydrocarbons with oxygen in the chemical structure, harmful gases like carbon monoxide which result from partially burned fuel in the presence of limited oxygen, can be brought down. The extra oxygen also has the added benefit of increasing the octane rating, which in turn increases the performance of the car. The most common example is ethanol, which is used by many countries around the world in their petrol blends. The idea behind adding ethanol is that it can be sourced from crops like corn and sugarcane, and when burnt, there will be no net CO2 released. This is why many countries have a percentage of ethanol in their petrol makeup. For example, the UK has recently changed its petrol mixture by introducing a 10% ethanol content in petrol sold at their pumps, which they say could cut carbon emissions by 750,000 tonnes a year. And it's fair to say it's proved pretty popular. However, adding ethanol isn't the magic bullet it was said to be. 
Ethanol has a lower energy per litre than petrol, and so overall, fuel economy will be reduced. Modern engines also monitor the oxygen levels in cars, adjusting the incoming oxygen when needed, so adding oxygenates to curb carbon monoxide emissions is no longer necessary. So while knocking may be reduced, more fuel will have to be burnt to travel the same distance. Questions have also been raised about the efficacy of dedicating vast tracts of arable land, which could be otherwise used for growing food, into growing biofuels. Farming these crops uses huge amounts of water at a time when droughts are on the rise. But it is certainly a step in the right direction. So, do you think adding biofuels to petrol is the right way to go, or do you think the benefits are offset by the costs? Let me know in the comment section below. If you liked the video, be sure to stay tuned to the channel for more like it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.